Devin has a broken jaw. No way. No way. You lie. Yeah, no, I swear. He has a broken jaw. Devin Haney, Devin, your thoughts on what happened tonight? Uh, I'm really love. You know, I'm not a perfect planner. Uh, I'm disappointed with my performance. But I showed that I was, that I was a, you know, a true champion and that um, I could fight with, after being knocked down and being hurt. You knew that left hand was Ryan's best weapon. You got clipped with it in the first round early one on. It just seemed like you couldn't stay away from it throughout the course of the night. Yeah, he called me He called me early when I was sleeping on it. Um, he called me by surprise. I fell asleep on the, on the left hook. We trained, we trained for it, but I got, I, I got in there and I, and I fell asleep uh, and, he, and he called me with it. So after Ryan Garcia caused, not just the biggest upset this year, However, one of the biggest upsets of all time by beating Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia revealed that Devin Haney actually broke his jaw in the fight. Apparently during the fight, one of Ryan Garcia hooks broke Devin Haney's jaw. Now that could have been in the first round, the seventh round, or the ninth round. Only God and Devin Haney knows. So it says a lot about Devin Haney. To take the loss on the chin, and make zero excuses by giving Ryan full credit, even though Ryan didn't deserve the full credit since he came overweight. He purposefully missed weight, admittedly, in order to have an advantage on fight night. Devin Haney could have had easily made an excuse about fighting with a broken jaw or suffering to make weight. However, Ryan, on the other hand, he broke the rules by purposefully missing weight over three pounds on the weigh-in. That was his plan in order to have an advantage on Devin Haney. So Devin could have had used all of that to make any excuse, but he didn't. And that's a sign of a true champion. I mean, a lot of fighters in Devin Haney's shoes would have had quit during the fight. But every time Devin Haney got dropped, he got right back up. Which again, that's another sign of a true champion. Just like when Muhammad Ali broke his jaw against Frazier, against Ken Norton, it didn't matter. Muhammad Ali fought on. He lost to them guys, but he came back to beat them twice in trilogies. So that's not far-fetched for Devin Haney, as Devin and Ryan were 3-3 three and three in the amateurs. This is not going to be easy, but Devin can turn the table on Ryan Garcia in a trilogy. We shall see how this chapter will play out. Devin Haney and Ryan both fought early in their careers. Devin is 25, Ryan is 26, so they can easily have a trilogy before they become 30 years old. Nevertheless, Devin Haney gave his reaction to losing to Ryan Garcia, where he said, Alhamdulillah. And that's a sign of a true believer right there, is thanking Allah during good times and during bad times, during the best times of your life and during the worst times of your life. Every soul must accept his destiny and what's written for them, good or bad, because tough times don't last, only tough people do. If anyone is gonna question why certain things happen, why God will put someone through a test, you gotta count God's favors first and see if that balances out on the scale or if God's favors are gonna crush the scale. So when you see Devin Haney thanking Allah during the worst moment of his professional career. That's his first reaction. That's the first thing that came to mind. That right there is a sign of a true believer. Nevertheless, Devin Haney reacted to losing to Ryan Garcia where he said, quote, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the perfect planner. He makes no mistakes. Fought like a true champion. Got up off the canvas and kept fighting. I'm 100% okay. And I would love to do it again while we both make weight. I have no broken anything, by the way. Like I said, I'm okay. Same way you dish it. You got to be able to take it. I will be back, inshallah. End of the quote. Well, one thing for sure, we know Devin is not going to make any excuses, even if he has one. Ryan literally gave him an excuse, and Devin's still talking about, hell nah, I'm okay. Now, I don't know if that's an ego thing, but I don't think Ryan will just lie about that. It sounds like Ryan heard it from a doctor or something like that. Either way, 
that doesn't matter. With a broken jaw or without a broken jaw, every time Devin Haney got dropped, he got back up. A lot of fighters in his shoes would have had chosen to quit. Hate him or love him, in win or defeat, Devin Haney makes no excuses. You can question a lot of things about Devin Haney, but you cannot question his heart. And that's outside of the ring by going out of his way to fight the best and inside of the ring. Just like he showed when he fought Ryan Garcia. Every time he got dropped, he got right back up. It didn't matter how badly hurt he was. Now in the rematch, there's a lot of adjustments Devin Haney has to make. He has to go back to the lab, work on his fundamentals. He cannot rely on his instincts of dodging punches and seeing a punch coming. Absolutely not. That's just the bonus. Your fundamentals have to be on point. Your game plan has to be on point. Everything has to be on point at this level. And I think Devin Haney fought emotional and his fundamentals caught up to him because of Ryan Garcia's speed along with his power. And I'm referring to things as simple as jabbing and keeping his hand by his waist instead of glued to his face, especially against a guy like Ryan, who's known for his check hook or his left hook and a guy who is trying to hook him off his jab. You can't just be relying on instinct. The fundamentals have to be on point first and the instinct is just on top of that. Even when Ryan Garcia was faking a jab and coming around with a hook, you have to work on a certain movement or a certain technique to avoid both the jab and the hook at the same time if you can't figure out which one is coming. Since clearly Devin Haney's problem in this fight was him not seeing Ryan Garcia punches coming. Ryan was simply too fast, too powerful, and too strong since he missed weight. That's why he missed it to begin with. Even after Devin Haney got badly hurt, it almost seemed like Devin Haney tried to knock Ryan Garcia out for that or keep his word instead of boxing like he was doing early with his jab and not boxing Ryan Garcia. He was too excited and emotional. That's how he was fighting. He didn't seem focused at all because Ryan was catching him with shots he shouldn't have caught him with. You see, Devin Haney's problem is not his chin, regardless of what people say. I mean, some of the shots Ryan was catching Devin Haney clean with would have had knocked out fighters who actually had iron chin. Devin Haney's problem was getting caught too clean by too many power punches that he didn't even see coming, which makes it even worse. I mean, even Javante himself, who has an iron chin, got hurt twice by Ryan Garcia with the right hand. But did you guys notice how Tank never got hurt? by Ryan Garcia left hook. Do you know why that is? The answer is simple. Tank never got caught by Ryan Garcia left hook, which speaks volume to Javante Tank Davis skill and defense. Just like Tank told Ryan, he told him the same thing Devin did. All you got is a left hook. However, Tank was able to execute and completely nullify the check hook or the left hook by Ryan Garcia. Ryan, he tried desperately to land the left hook on Javante Davis to no prevail. This is why the best chin in boxing is the one that doesn't get hit. So Devin Haney's problem is that he was getting hit too clean, too often with punches that he wasn't seeing coming from a serious puncher who has a lot of speed on top of that. That was Devin Haney's problem. Not that he doesn't have a chin. Because if he didn't have a chin, the fight would have been over in the first round. Now, when Devin Haney first got hurt, it looked like he recovered well. However, he rarely used the half step. There's a lot of things Devin Haney could have had done, which would have had made the fight easier, but he made the fight more difficult, which played right into Ryan Garcia's hand. Credit to Ryan Garcia, he outsmarted Devin Haney outside of the ring with his antics and inside of the ring, the way he had Devin Haney fighting. Ryan gets multiple credit for me. One for doing that, outsmarting Devin Haney outside of the ring and inside of the ring. Two for beating Devin Haney, something even Ryan Garcia fans didn't think he was capable of doing. Third, 
the way he keeps fighting the best. Last year he fought Tank. This year he fought Devin. So you have to respect that. And I respect the fact that he fought these guys. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. As long the best fighting the best, there is no shame in losing to the best. Just like I respect Devin Haney for always willing to fight anybody, anywhere, at any place, at any time. That being said, stylistically, Ryan Garcia will always give Devin Haney a lot of problems. That's why Devin Haney has some serious adjustments to make. I'm talking about even in the inside, Devin Haney could have had did the Andre Ward by going to the outside behind Ryan Garcia's shoulder or back the way he was turning and hooking Ryan Garcia from that positioning because that was a safe spot to do that all day long. More importantly, fix certain mistakes and stay in focus, circling around to not get caught by the punches Ryan Garcia caught him with last night. Last but not least, on my last video, I'm going to leave a link for that video in the comment section below. A lot of the Devin Haney haters, they had a problem with me saying that Ryan took advantage of Devin Haney when he missed weight by 3.2 pounds. A lot of decafs in the comment section said, Devin Haney rehydrates back up to 165. So what's the problem? If Ryan rehydrated to 170 plus, they only a few pounds apart. It's not about rehydrating back up. That's only a portion of it. The main portion is the fact that Devin Haney was killing himself to make the weight because he's a true professional. He never misses weight, right? Ryan, on the other hand, he didn't kill himself to make weight. So while Devin Haney is suffering to make weight, weakening himself. So on fight night, he's not going to come 100% because he's struggling to make the weight. A lot of people talk about the pros of gaining 20 pounds after the weigh-in. However, they don't talk about the cons of the fighter suffering to make the weight, struggling to make the weight, which takes something out of the fighter. So Devin Haney on fight night, he's not going to come 100%. Ryan, on the other hand, he didn't follow the rules. He broke the rules in order to get an advantage. Due to Ryan not following the rules, he didn't suffer to make the weight. He didn't weaken himself to make the weight the same way Devin Haney did. So on fight night, while Devin Haney was probably 80 to 90% of himself, Ryan Garcia, on the other hand, was not just 100%, he was 110%. Since Ryan Garcia didn't kill himself to make the way like Devin Haney did because he didn't want that to take something out of him. This is not up for debate. This is what Ryan Garcia admitted. He said out of his own mouth, this was all planned. He did it for an advantage. He didn't want to make the weight so he can come into the ring stronger than Devin Haney, healthier than Devin Haney to give himself a better chance at beating Devin Haney. Even then, the zone had the fight scored 112-112. This is not me, this is the zone. This was such a close fight. The zone had the fight scored a draw. One judge had the fight scored a draw. So you can just imagine if Ryan didn't have this advantage. Who knows? Devin Haney could have had B in Ryan Garcia. And that's my point exactly. This is why Ryan gave himself every advantage in the book, even against the rules, to even out the odds against Devin Haney, which he did. He was able to beat Devin Haney, even though it was against the rules. These are facts. This is not excuses. So if you want to call this an excuse, well, let's apply this excuse on Canelo. Let's say Canelo fought David Benavidez, but... David Benavidez didn't make the weight at 168. Instead, he came in at 172. Would you guys give Benavidez his full credit if he knocked out Canelo then? Heck, Devin Haney made the weight against Lomachenko at 135 and beat him, and y'all still called him a weight bully. So let's say Devin Haney came in at 138 pounds against Lomachenko a fight that was at 135. And let's say Devin Haney knocked out Lomachenko. 
Would you guys have given Devin Haney his full credit for beating Lomachenko? We all know what time it is. If this was reversed, if Devin Haney came in at 143.2 and Ryan came in at 140, you guys would have had called Devin Haney a weight bully and completely took the credit away from Devin Haney. So according to you guys, if breaking the rules is not taking advantage, if that's not significant, then why follow the rules at all? I mean, if Canelo fights Benavidez, Benavidez should come in at 175 then instead of 168. Why follow the rules if the rules don't matter, right? During the fight, why not throw a kick if the rules don't matter? We all know what time it is. The rules don't matter when it comes to a fighter on the coincidentalist if he's being taken advantage of. But these same fans will swear up and down, making excuses to this day to why Ryan lost the tank, even though in that fight, they did follow the rules. So can you imagine if Tank came in at 140 pounds while he made Ryan Garcia come at 136? What would you guys say then? Tank followed the rules and you guys still made excuses to this day, claiming the laws didn't matter. We all know what time it is. Like I said before, when Corrales beat Castillo in the first fight, Castillo in the rematch came in four pounds overweight simply for an advantage. He ended up knocking out Corrales in the fourth round. However, nobody talks about that fight. Nobody gave Castillo credit for that fight because the media, the fans, and fighters alike all said Castillo win didn't count since he cheated in that fight. They considered that cheating. So to all of the decaps all around the world, raise your hand one time so we know who you guys are. Now I want you guys to look at yourselves in the mirror because you guys sound as dumb as y'all look. Arguing with me about something Ryan Garcia already admitted. Arguing with me about something that's not up for debate. You can't bring a knife to a gunfight. You can't bring your emotional opinions on the table where I'm speaking nothing but facts, since facts always trump your emotional opinions. Now, when it comes to Devin Haney losing, so what? Ryan Garcia lost last year. He came back this year to beat Devin Haney. A loss doesn't define you. How you bounce back from a loss defines you. Even the greatest Muhammad Ali lost. First thing I said when Ryan beat Devin is congratulations to Ryan. It's funny how all of the Devin Haney haters united from all walks of life. However, before the fight, even Ryan's own fans was picking him to lose and were already making excuses for him before the fight began. At least I did it. I told you guys Ryan was more than ready and Devin was going to be in a serious fight. I even called it the way Ryan was going to have success. So to all of the Rays fans, you guys sound as dumb as y'all look. Y'all better check the scoreboard. It's crazy how Devin Haney is the only fighter in boxing that lost and didn't make excuses, even though he had excuses right in front of our faces. I'm talking about facts, not even excuses. He still made none. And y'all still hating on him. With the opinions out of the door and the facts laid out on the table, go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continue on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.